Welcome to You're Allowed to Hate Your Husband, a modern day love story. I am Remy Stern. I'm a relationship coach, and we are going to talk all things relationships from being single to dating to being engaged, married. Who you marry is the most important decision you will ever make. If you're looking for a wife, which is a beautiful thing to do, the best thing to do is to choose wisely. If you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? Everybody else has it right. Then you are in the right place because trust me, nobody knows what they're doing. I'm so excited. Please hop right in, listen to this episode, listen to this series, and we are so excited that you are joining us here. Welcome back to You're Allowed to Hate Your Husband. Today's episode is a really special episode with somebody who I admire a lot. I learn so much from. His name is Rabbi Daniel, Millennial Rabbi on Instagram. He hosts these incredible events in Manhattan and all over the world that help you embody spirituality. There's a lot of meditation and, you know, prayer and really taking these huge ideas of how to be happy, how to be fulfilled, how to be connected and have meaning and purpose in your life. And he actually teaches people and creates a space where people can embody it. And this episode goes through all of the ways that you can live your happiest life every single day and feel connected and feel loved. So hop right in. I know you're going to love it and enjoy. All right. So welcome back to You're Allowed to Hate Your Husband. Rabbi, we are so excited to have you here. You are actually one of my favorite people ever. And I just align with everything you're doing and it's very unique. So just to start off, could you tell everybody what you do? Because it's it's very unique. It's a cool um, niche you have and people love what you do. So first of all, thank you for having me on and thank you for always being a supporter and a champion of what I do. It's a big, uh, always that you're one of the first supporters when I came to New York city. So really appreciate, appreciate you. Um, I grew up in San Diego, California, uh, and not going to give my whole backstory, but I, around, um, 2018, I was, uh, in my backyard in, I know you're from Southern California as well. I, I was praying the Friday night service because I love being in nature. I love to uh, um, connect to God spiritually through music, nature, other alternative methods like that. And uh, I realized that I wasn't in synagogue. And it kind of hit me that if I'm not resonating as much in synagogue, but rather in other environments like that, my peers are probably the same way. And I started creating, that's when I created Soul X, my nonprofit organization stands for Soul Experience. And it's uh, focused on helping us to kind of bridge the mind with the heart and body. You know, often we're very intellectual um, religion and we have amazing wisdom, but sometimes it stays there and we move on with our life. And in our events, we always try through meditation, through live music, through other methods to connect to the wisdom, the beautiful wisdom of of Torah and of Judaism um, and really experience it and really connect it with our lives. So uh, 2020 moved out from San Diego to New York. And um, I distinctly remember you saying, mm-hmm. you got to come out, you got to move to New York City, you got to make it happen. Um, and uh, and it's been amazing. I've uh, just been doing more and more events, growing community and people really resonating with um, with what we're offering, thank God. It's the coolest thing ever. So it's embodying Judaism, embodying spirituality. So whatever, I guess, anyone's spirituality is out there, it's, it's walking through life with that knowing, with that spirituality. And I think that's, you know, people listen to podcasts and it happens to me all of the time. And I'm, I'm connected on the podcast. I'm, I'm hearing what they're saying and I'm like, okay, great. But then how do I go live my life like this? How do I become this best version of myself? And that happens a lot through the body. So what, what's like the main thing you do to take these incredible intellectual concepts mm. and, and put them into the body? Like it's, yeah, it's a very, Cool process. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, you know, when we think of like, let's say meditation, sometimes you think about clearing your mind and like, you know, just, and there's, there's a lot of that as well. But when the reason I incorporate the meditation side, for example, based, based on your point is that when you learn an idea, like, let's say it's the idea of like the love God has for you. Let's say that's a very fundamental concept that we should have. It's 
it's a nice idea, but when I have people close their eyes and and we have the music and we have a guided experience, you give yourself a, a moment to actually like feel into what that means, what what Judaism, like all these concepts that we we live by. It can it can stay esoteric and stay ethereal by doing these experiences and making it experiential. I think it helps um, helps give us a moment to feel into what what this means. I mean, to get Kabbalistic, you know, everyone probably heard of Chabad. Chabad stands for Chachma Bina Dat. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge is not a good translation. That's how it's usually translated. But the third one, Dat, is my main focus. Dot is the idea of connecting to an idea. The first two are about understanding an idea. Dot is like, how do I make this idea part of my life? And I think, I think meditation, prayer, visualization, not just being in the books, but like feeling into it, that's how you get into that, um, that, that embodied, internalized state of being. So idea. cool. Cause I you sound like a real nature guy. <laughs> Lover of nature. It's funny. You know, I moved from San Diego to New York. People are like, why? Why would you do that? And I realized there's two ways that you can connect spiritually. You told me this and I tell everybody. Oh, I, I yeah, think no, I borrow okay. a lot of your things. Tell us you again. Tell us. No, tell you, you tell us. <laughs> me tell us say better than I do. haven't heard it yet. <laughs> um, uh, is that there's two ways. One is through nature. No question. Okay. I grew up a few minutes from the beach. I think, and I know you guys are always engaging in nature a lot. I, I You feel the raw kind of... Um, godliness because when you're in a building and you're in you know an urban city sometimes you see man-made structures you don't you can go a whole year in new york and your feet don't touch the grass you know you don't really feel god's nature however the reason i love new york is that you connect to human beings which are god's most incredible creations mm-hmm. in my opinion and human beings help you in so many ways but it helps you like i think connect to god in through community, through the energy here, through creativity, through so many things that feeds the soul. So I think you need both. And I gain from both. Um, yeah. Do you ever hold your meditations outdoors or in nature? I, I wish I could do that more. It's a little chilly right now over here, but uh, <laughs> we'll have you on San our Diego. Roof. We'll have you on our roof when it's nice out. Okay. Once the weather gets good, New <laughs> York's got to watch out. We're going to have some, I'm, I'm really <laughs> excited in general for the good weather, doing outdoor Shabbats and everything. Um, I would say my first ever event I did in this space was in my parents' backyard in San Diego. We did a sound meditation to transition from the week into Shabbat. They have a lot of grassy area where everyone's lying down. Weather was good. It was sunset time. And I was like, why, like, what are we trying to do here? Yes, I want everybody to do the whole prayer service. I'd love everybody to um, to make a birkat amazon after blessing on the food. Like all these things are part of important. But I was like, essentially, we want people to feel that we're now entering a sacred time. That's what Shabbat is. It's a time for me and my soul. It's a time for me and God and, and my community. So let's go to do that. Let's do that within the context of connecting. I knew many people coming didn't know the prayers. So we did a we did a um, that we did a, a sound healing experience to really relax and connect to the presence of Shabbat energy, and then we did kiddush and we did um, a Shabbat meal. But that was my first event. So when I can do out in nature, I You're doing um, it. do it. This is going to sound crazy, but if you asked me where I would be connecting to God more, because I'm I consider myself a very spiritual person, and I love God, um, in shul on Saturday with 300 guys in suits and button downs praying from the book or running in the rain in Central Park and doing Mm. a three mile run while looking up and just enjoying Mm. nature, enjoying our blessings. I would say running in the rain. Mm. And uh, that would bring me closer, I think, to to just saying thank you. Thank you for all these beautiful blessings. Um, That's running in the rain is kind of like a meditation. Yeah. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. And I think I want to make clear that um, I think in Judaism, it's not meant to remain in the synagogue. It's meant to be part of your life. That's different maybe than other religions is the idea that that these experiences, like the 300 people in the synagogue, is meant to be a moment for you to connect to community and then to connect, hopefully, when prayer is done right, like you really, you can get there. It's uh, it's an amazing experience as well when you really take a moment at the synagogue to just um, connect to the words. A lot of us don't know what the words mean. Like if when done right, I do believe it can be a powerful experience for sure. But in 2020, 2024, you know, where we're at, a lot of times we connect in our own ways, uh, much easier. I would say when you do the running, um, if there's an opportunity to kind of just elevate it a little bit into thinking like, 
you know, this, the rain, I was thinking, for example, I was thinking last night, when you breathe air, this is an expression of godliness. Like you're actually breathing in God's gift. So if you can connect, like as you're breathing and as you're running, as you're feeling the rain and all that, and you can like feel like this is, this is God giving me legs and an ability to run. And it's giving Mm -hmm. me like, when you elevate it that way, I believe you're doing a holy thing if every step. So I'm obsessed with everything. (laughs) (laughs) This is speaking my lane. I feel like this takes like your foundation because I find that traditional Judaism, like the, the words to the Torah, not changing them. There's so much depth in the structure of it. Right. So like, in my opinion, finding Judaism later in life, I don't want to change the holiness of the structure of it, but I think there's a way that you can Hmm. elevate it that maybe hasn't been looked at enough. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that's what you're doing. And to be honest, sorry, I'm Absolutely. outing. Absolutely. It's 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 an yeah. addition. It's not changing. It's not yeah. saying like, okay, but now I'm going to like use yeah. a, a microphone on Shabbat. Like not necessarily that, but like, like you're wearing the tzitzi. You're doing all of this, but it's saying like, let me elevate it, which is a very, um, you know, my last episode, I, I talked about how I worked at WeWork and so many things I want to say, but, mm. but in my last episode, um, and a reason I came to Judaism and you talked about your first experience hosting a Soul X thing was Shabbat. And Adam Newman was up on stage and I asked him a question when I worked there and he was talking about smiling from within, smile like to a bunch of people from all over the world, not, not Jewish, all over the world. He's telling everyone smile from within. And I said, great, Adam Newman, that's awesome. Good for you. But like how, you know, when I'm waking up early in the morning and I'm in my little apartment downtown in Manhattan and my life, like I'm figuring out my life. How do I wake up every day and smile from within? And I think this is a question that a lot of people have. It's like, how do I actually live this way? It's great to learn about it. Mm. It's great to talk about it. It's great to see it and all of this, but how do I live my, my life this way? His answer was Shabbat. He said, Mm. I can work so hard five, six days a week, but there's Juliet. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, <laughs> but the second I, I know that one day a week, I'm, I'm connecting to myself. I'm connecting to people I love. Like I'm disconnecting from my work, from the world to connect within. He said, that's what keeps me smiling from within every single day of the week. So just going on that concept, hmm. um, is that what you experienced with Shabbat? Are there other ways that people can really live this life of smiling from within and feeling the spirituality? When, when, when Julia said, Mama, I was thinking how Shabbat is that, right? That's like you and God, like maybe you ignore your connection spiritually the whole week. And then Shabbat comes in, you greet the Shabbat. That's the mystics and Sfat used to walk out into the fields, literally greet the Shabbat energy that was coming in. And uh, I feel like that, that was, you know, like that excitement to see your father in heaven or see your mother. That's, that's what kind of made me think of Shabbat, but I love Shabbat. By the way, I've spent Shabbat with Adam and he loves it. So to this day, so I, I, (laughs) it's true. And, um, I, you know, the concept of fulfillment and happiness is such a mysterious, not just, it, it's, there's, I, I've come to realize there's many parts of it. Of course, in a moment, if you decide to just like connect to like your, you know, realize that, you know, you, you surrender a little bit and realize like Hashem's guiding you on a path, like you can have moments of like transcendence and happiness and also in a very superficial way, you just have something you enjoy to eat. Like there's for sure moments of happiness that we have. And by the way, Maybe life is a collection of many moments. It's not about always. It's about, you know, I've had, I saw an interview with, I follow sports a lot and soccer and Zlatan Ibrahimovic said, I don't believe in, he's like, I don't believe happiness is an, he's like, I enjoy, there's, I've had great moments in my life. But the concept of like a lasting kind of higher happiness is what interests me. Uh, and I, in, 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 in society and culture, I think, you know, we, we believe that like happiness is a goal. Is a is a is an end thing that I'm trying to get to, and if I do enough of X, then I'll get to Y. If I make enough money, or I you know X, Y, and Z, I'll get to the happiness. And Judaism says no that that happiness is is a byproduct of living a meaningful life. That when you're living aligned with your soul and with your higher purpose, that and you feel you're on the right kind of path in life, there's like a quiet contentment that comes from that, uh, and and. And you feel, and I felt that, like as I've kind of continued on my path and been able to step more into my purpose, I feel just on an everyday thing, like I'm on this journey almost. Like in the back of my mind, I feel like I'm on the right path. And sadness would be, no, 
you like you could outwardly you could be having all the good things, but if you're not going that direction, that could be almost like a subconscious bit of that you're and betraying you see that your soul's a lot. purpose. You see that a lot when people have everything and more and they're sad and you're like, but why are you so sad? You've got everything. Yeah. Like, but it's that internal. If you don't mind, I'm gonna tell a little story because you you just hit so many points. And this is something Jonathan teaches me so much. But someone recently, you know, when someone tells you something, and I've got a lot of these from you that like, to be honest, I use a lot of them to hope your words hit not just me and the people you tell, but hopefully they ripple into the world. Um, But someone said something to me, let's say a week and a half or two weeks ago. And they said, you know what I want you to do? Because I said, I haven't been doing my prayers and like my daily prayers. And for whatever reasons, I go through phases of like hour long meditations every morning and then you know, I've been sleeping in to get my body better. But um, he said to me, he said, you know what? I don't want you to even try to pray right now. What I want you to do is throughout the day, just have a little conversation with God. You know, once, like you said, when you go on a run and you see the rain, you're like, wow, that's so pretty. Thank you, God. And like, oh my God, like I'm, this run is hard, but look at my legs working. Like, this is so cool. Just little conversations. And then if you're like, Hmm, God, like, what do I want to eat for lunch today? Just like the seas, like literally bring it into the silliest part of your day. Like the, mm-hmm. the most, what you would expect to be meaningless part of your day. And then watch how God's going to come and answer you on the bigger things. Mm-hmm. So just as a fun fact in, on my life right now, I um, started doing it. And then in the past week and a half, two weeks, seemingly, if you were to look at what's happening in my life, it seems like a lot of things are crumbling and burning. <laughs> Things are a, a lot of things in my life that like have always been certainties are now being taken away from me, which it's it's hard, right? Like the first feeling when when I'm discovering all of these n- new things in my life is like a little heartbreak. It's uh, getting older and having to say bye to you know things. Or it's it's hard, but because I started doing this little conversations with God, I would say it's the first time in my life that I felt kind of happy through the process, like truly like. Oh my God. Hey God, it must be you. Cause not one thing fell apart, not two things, but it seems like so many things in my life are like, what is going on? And it's like, you must be playing some awesome role to make, to make us like, we had to get rid of these things to get to there. And like, it was this sense Mm -hmm. for the first time ever, because this person told me to have conversations with God, that even if something quote unquote hard is happening in my life, I'm like happy. And I'm like, I, I trust and I'm excited by what's to come. And I'm not booked. And does that like bringing God into your life and that little, little, little level and whatever your God is to whoever is out there, you know, you're to bring the universe in and saying, it's guiding you, it's leading you. Like it might be hard, but another thing, and <laughs> that was talking is that, you know, I, I always like to think of that relationship of a baby to a parent as us, the babies to, to God, let's say the children of God. Um, and one time I heard that this this rabbi was saying his son needed to get like maybe a spinal tap, something extremely uncomfortable and painful. And the rabbi was holding his kid down like this and they were putting in like, the needles and stuff. And the kid's looking at his dad and hysterically crying and saying, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you? He goes, you don't understand. I'm saving you. Mm. And I think that happens to people a lot, which could be something happening in my life where we sit and we're in a bad place. You know, it's those tough moments. And you're like, but where have you? Why? Like I, where are you? I'm doing all the things right. And to lean back and trust and to be like, no, I'm saving you. Like that's a way to live with God. And I feel like you do that very, very well. It's you hit on everything. I mean, my whole, my whole, I think my spiritual service of my life is to try to internalize that point more. Faith is just to, and, and Judaism, I always tell people it's not a religion. It's a relationship that, you know, the more you do, the more you feel connected, more intimate connection to God. If you go once a year for Yom Kippur, just like if you call a loved one once a year, it's a beautiful thing, but it's, you're not going to feel that real connection. Um, by doing the little things every day and speaking to God about little problems, uh, which I haven't always done. My mother, if she needs a parking space, she'll be like, God, you know, you know, I'm like, don't bother God in my head, you know, but, <laughs> but breast love Hasidic approach is that they'll speak to God in their own words every day for like an hour sit in the forest in Israel or in New York and they'll, they'll, they'll do that. that. Um, I think it's great. I think this, this is huge. The idea of being able to understand that it's life isn't coming to mess you over. Everything's coming for your benefit, even when it doesn't appear that way. And we forget, I honestly think 
the gro- spiritual growth, how do you measure it? Like if you go to the gym, you can measure growth. Spiritual growth, I think, is measured by how long it takes to remind yourself after negativity that it's really for your best. That's really cool. Do you think spiritual growth only goes in one direction or this is an up no. and down roller coaster? Up and down roller coaster for sure. However, within, this is going to sound paradoxical, as you said it, within the up and down roller coaster, I still think you're you're going up. So like, sure. you're not the same up and it's, you could so one day be like, I thought I got over that, whatever it was, and I, five years ago, but I don't think you regressed. I think it's just, we have inside of us, according to the mystical teachings, we have two sides of us. Um, an animalistic soul and a divine soul. But basically there's a side of us that is like a total heretic that is just about ego, just about self. And you're like, I thought I refined myself. Why am I still like, you know, Yom Kippur ends and I'm like pushing everyone out of the way to get my bagel. I thought I got, <laughs> um, but but within that, those falls, I I still think you're, you can be making growth in your life. And, um, but we're always fighting. There's a, there's a Jewish book called, I think, Spiraling Upwards. And I love that visual of like, you could deal with the same, let's say if it's a spiritual growth thing, like you could deal with the same issue, but you're always one spiral above. And, and I think doing this work and showing up to your events and, you know, doing this work makes you spiral way up and you, you might deal with the same thing. Kind of like I do this work and I might be dealing with something hard, but I thank God. And I've got a long ways to go. I'm dealing with it a little bit higher. So how would you say like, as a daily practice, and, and Jonathan, I, I love that he does this. You know, I've got my meditation practice, and I would do anything for him to sit with me one day and do it. Um, but he puts on. I told you, honey, I will join you instead of a tea meditation for a pizza meditation. No, 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 no. we do a lot of pizza meditations. Yes, By the way, yes, yes. Why you do you say this. no? You got a problem with pizza? <laughs> no, tea. I'm only allowed to do tea meditation. Not interested. <laughs> you're coming. You're that's, coming. That's a revolutionary idea. I like it. Cool. We have women's programming. We need to do men's. We did a yeah. tea ceremony. Yeah. Like, have with a, like a warm chocolate you cake did? and vanilla ice oh, cream. Oh, incredible! Why didn't you meditation? Me? I need that. To, I, I would sign up for. When when, when I Remy's like, you got to come to New York. I need your events. She spurs me on, and then she's gone for the last three years. I however, know, I had a however, baby. You had a baby. I'm bringing it up Upper side. That's different. You I'll, I'll bring you up to Upper side. Okay. Well, I'll come to you. Come <laughs> to you guys. Make it happen. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm joking with you because because of spurring it on, and you've even led things at our events. So, um, been fantastic. But uh, but yeah, we do a lot of things. I think you'd enjoy programmatically. Regarding the pizza, it's funny you say that because you know, like we do on Saturday Shabbat, it's usually two and a half hour service and then a long kiddush. And I was like, why don't we just combine it? So I've done sometimes like a Ooh. mindful. Either two things. I do like a brunch discussion kiddish thing I've started where we go almost straight to like the, but it's, but we have, uh, you know, discussion and learning, but I have done mindful eating where we have the food and the drink, but we make a blessing and we, there's a ways to have like intention where like you enjoy it more and you connect it back to God through, which goes back to what we were saying. How do I bring this into my daily practice? Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll do a mindful like pizza eating. And I'm not kidding you. Bravo. Jonathan, like Jonathan is leading the mindful pizza eating event. I'm so excited. Oh, I will be the guru. <laughs> I'll buy Jonathan. an outfit. I'll be everybody grab your slice of pizza. Jonathan's gonna, and walk with me. And you're gonna, We're gonna make dance. It happen. We're gonna sing. You're gonna be like, who is this guy? <laughs> this guy's the king of the meditation. Not not a mushroom pizza. This is regular, regular. I'm not I'm not a mushroom guy. Not a mushroom I'm not guy. a mushroom guy when it comes to that's, I don't okay. know what type of mushrooms we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, you were talking about meditative pizza, so I was talking about the other, other, other kind <laughs> of My Jonathan's- mother watched this show. I do not. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> the only edible mushrooms I consume go on the Our pizza. porcini. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Jonathan's going to put the red peppers and the chili flakes and the oregano and the extra parmesan. So what are the spiritual meanings to all those? Maybe spice. <laughs> spice is necessary for okay, your life. Okay, I'll tell you. By the way, okay, so so there was a Shabbat at a... Um, at a I should, I don't know if I can say this, but it was in a, it was in a, it, it, they did a gospel, a Shabbat gospel. Okay, love it. And they invited me to do the Kiddush and to like give it to our Torah. And uh, this guy asked me, he like grew up like Hasidic, he's not anymore. And, um, and he's like, like, tell me a Dvar Torah. And the first thing that came to my mind was from the Baal Shem Tov. It's in Savat Vash number 90. It's one of his, uh, he never, a lot of them didn't write their own books. It was their students that put it together. And it, he says over there that when you eat something delicious, or if you see a beautiful um, something in the world or a person or something, anything, you can think to yourself, this is a ray, this is a radiance, this is a spark of the divine. Why would I get so consumed by a mere spark and when I could connect to the source? It's like seeing a sun ray. What if I could connect? The sun would be tough, but what, what would it be like if I could connect to the source of this thing? And you can almost extrapolate this 
experience back up. And that's a mindful way, a spiritual way to consume the world. When you go to a basketball game, when you eat something delicious, see something beautiful, you can say, this is awesome. And, and I, wow, I imagine God must be pretty awesome too. That's also another thing I think about. So cool. God seems like That's such cool. a such a cool. dis, God seems like such a detached concept. But like every rapper, musician, movie you enjoy and relate to and love and star, we believe is an expression of God. Like God thought of this. So That's actually cool. really nice. When I'm sun tanning <laughs> in uh, in the summer months, <laughs> I, I don't just this. get sun. I become the sun. Oh my. And gosh. and my tan is better than any tan out there. My <laughs> My wife and I would go to Miami, but it looks like she went to Alaska Excuse and me. I came back. I feel like you can tan. Day. You can tan. You're lucky. I know what I'm doing. I'm a pro. No, Jonathan, it'll be like 55 degrees in New York with like a little sun and you'll see him like out in the sun like this. Like oh, yeah. he always has vitamin D. He talks and he, Jonathan does it. By the way, I, I don't think this is very good. He doesn't believe in sunscreen because he's like, mm. I want no, the no. shems. Once like, in a while, I'll put on a special sunscreen. I tanning need oil. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> tanning oil. Yeah. Tanning oil. <laughs> it's not sunscreen. Tanning uh, accelerator <laughs> that for that strange. San Tropez tan. <laughs> but he believes. I, I don't believe in all of these lotions and all these things because they're very, they have, like, I don't want to say cause cancer, but like. John, they, very I, think, I think we can all agree. I think we can all agree on the, on the shoulder. There's certain spots that, that can use a little some something. Um, Maybe. But I freckled up growing up. I don't know how it would be now if I was in the sun too long, but because of that, I got into sunscreen mode always. Yeah. Uh, here. I want to get all the freckles on my yeah. face. I'm not a freckler. So Jonathan, now I think different. I'm past the He's very past, much like, like, yeah. like Hashem did it right. Mm. We don't need to mess with the system. The system is better than what we think we're messing with. I, I think just going back to your original question, I'm getting very esoteric, but I think Jonathan might, you might be embodying like a big point of happiness, which is like growing up, my, I, I get a lot of wisdom from my parents and my, my, uh, my mother would, would often like remark, let's say it's like a family gathering. She would just remark. She'd be like, life is good. Or she would say something like, this is as good as it gets. And for us, we're like, think of this glamorous, like, this is as good as it gets. I want to go to, and I thought about it. As you get older, you're like, what do you have? Like when you're with your family and you have harmony and you're having a nice meal together, this is about, this is, this is life. This is what it's all about. And this is a beautiful thing in and of itself. It's not about I think a lot of times we're searching for the next thing and trying to get somewhere. And I was watching an interview with, uh, I don't know if you watch Reacher. It's like a show on a uh, big, yeah. big, strong guy. I love that guy. So that guy was interviewed on one of these shows and he said, and everyone says this, Jim Carrey, they all say this about Hollywood, but when he said it, it hits. You know, sometimes you hear something and it like, you've heard it before, but it hits. He's like, no one tells you that there's nothing on the other end of this. I was like, yeah. he's like, I got famous. Like I, I got, and like nothing changes. You are who you were before. And I think we have this thing in our head, like if something were to happen, and yes, I think things do. I do believe from singlehood to marriage to um, getting a job opportunity, like these are major things. But I also think that the more we can in our daily lives find ways to appreciate the journey and appreciate the little things, the better off. It sounds like you had a uh, a very positive glass half full uh, mother. Yeah. Am I big time guessing right? Yeah. I also cool. was blessed yeah, with a glass half full mother. And I think like you just said, as we get older and the decades pass us by, we don't think about what are the top hundred things we didn't do or we did mm. wrong. I think in life, you know, on your resume, your your happiness, your memories, your your best photos that you put in your frames are, are what good you accomplished. You know, what changes did you make around you? That helped people. Mm. And that these are glass half full memories and accomplishments. So I think that as our life goes by, if all that matters is what we we accomplish in the positive category, then what we should really focus on every day is is the positive category. And in addition and embrace to what, that. what good did I do and the things is like, who was I? Like, what did I, because like you guys exude, like you're, it's your being. Basically, when we interact with people, whether we don't even speak to them on the subway or we walk into a room and there's so much influence and impact we have just through our vibrational, you can tell Southern California. Right? I love it. Um, you're talking my language. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's how you've worked on yourself, how you embody, and that I think you can also, you know, put your hat on. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting um, the term, but you can- uh, Take your hat. No, no. When you like, you wear different dip hats. Dip your Oreo. 
Point is, you can hang your Oreo. Ha- I think it's extra extra sauce <laughs> at the pizza. What's with right? the mindful pizza? I don't know. I'm what? Of, the mindful pizza needs dip Oreos for dessert. What this Oreo? Is the whole thing. You don't eat. You don't go on the subway and dip your Oreo, honey. No. Just a when was the last time you took you... a subway? No. You don't take the I subway. Don't, I, don't. I don't know if I want to know what that represents. What, what <laughs> I don't either. Um, okay. Hang your hat on, I think is what I okay. meant to say at the end okay. of your life oh. is that um, is, 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 is what you embody, that good energy like your mother had and like good mine energy. had because it impacts everyone. A hundred percent. And if, if yeah. someone meets me or meets you, I think is like, do they believe, if I want them to leave that experience be like, I believe in like God more. I believe that like life isn't just everyone trying to like kill each other to get somewhere, but like there's actually good. We're all connected. A hundred percent. And the truth is that you definitely cannot take an unhappy journey to a happy destination. So you're not going to appreciate more if you don't appreciate what you have now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the harder things for, I find that actual gratitude and actual trust are two of the hardest things for people to do, but are probably the most life-changing, which is grateful for what I have, but not just like, okay, you know, the five minute journal in the morning to say, I'm grateful for these things, but to actually be like, I mean, Juliet saying mama just now, mm. like that's my entire life. Mm. That That is everything and more. And I, then trust. I think you can yeah. take a uh, an unhappy journey and make it a f- like the best experience ever. No, no, you have to make the journey the best experience ever. Yeah. But if you're being unhappy on the journey, for example, say you want to meet a, per- a person, like you're single, you want to meet someone mm-hmm. and you're so upset while you're single. You're so upset. You're so upset. Mm. You're so upset. You're not going to all of a sudden be happy until you make yourself happy. Like, or if you're building this business and you're like, if you're so upset the whole time, you're not going to arrive to a happy destination. So you have to make the journey happy and then you're at a happy and, destination, but you just keep going on the happy destination. And I, I, I think you're, you're right. And, but, and I also think you can hold space for the reality of like, let's say someone's single and, and they're, they're, they're lonely or say, it's okay to recognize that 100%. point. At the same time, like notice the blessings in your life. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you can have all of all of them all the time. So maybe take this time to be like, maybe God's given me other things now, uh, whether it be work-wise, travel-wise, things I won't be able to do as much later. It's finding the blessings in the now and and not fooling yourself to being like, oh, I'm happy. I actually know I could be single forever. No, maybe, maybe you want that. But at the same time, you know, recognizing, um, and, and that kind of goes to, I'd say the final piece of happiness. You could be on a spiritual journey and be super aligned and all these things are great. What I've learned more lately in my life is that it's your relationships too. And you can have a great relationship with your family, which is huge, but I think friendships and, um, a romantic partner, I think these are, uh, very important. And in my life, I would say, I'm be totally open and vulnerable that those are two areas that I have not, that I don't, have and including friendships, to be honest, because on my spiritual journey, I often would jump from school to school every nine months, Jerusalem, New York. I was all about my own growth. Wherever I can go to learn the best and grow the most, that's what I'm going to do. Then when I finished, I was like, I'm going to, where, where can I be of impact? So I'm going to go to places that didn't have other like strong Jewish communities. Um, and when I live in New York, I live in downtown New York because I want to be of more impact. But because of all these decisions, I haven't nurtured good friendships. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this year, my like goal is to do that. Um, and also to find some money, but, but until then is to n- have strong friendships and find people that raise me up, that inspire me. Cause in my line of work, it's often inspiring. I, I realize that that's something that I've pushed to the side and I've focused on my relationship with God, which has given me so much, but I, I think we need, we need to nurture good, the, you, the people you're around and the relationships. I think those are some beautiful Desires for 2024, Rabbi. I it. love it. And by the way, in my journey, I, I dated someone on and off for a very long time through my childhood, which takes up a lot of your time. Like and four to seven? It or? was 14, 14 <laughs> to 24. So, okay, so okay. not much better. But um, we're 23. But um, yeah. So 25? 25. <laughs> it's ongoing. It's ongoing. So. Once in a while. Honey, did you guys break up last year? <laughs> the transition is Well, confusing. the time's a little muddled. But. <laughs> but, but a huge part of it for me was all of a sudden being so alone. And I hit a point that I was so alone that I needed to find friendships and people to rely on. And now that I'm married and it works out, whatever you want, it you will get it. It's a matter of time. But if I didn't, form those relationships, then 
I would be so lonely now. Like mm. the, the loneliness doesn't leave you. So wherever you're at, and I know somebody who's single right now, who their biggest thing was to form really, really, really great relationships with people. And that person is thriving now, has a new plan every night with like deep connection mm. people, not meaningless connections, but super, super deep connections. And I think that's kind of the theme of this happiness is to wherever you are, like form a deep connection with that thing in front of you. So whether it's literally food, you know, it's saying like, this could be meaningless mm. or it could be the best bite of food I've ever had in my yeah. entire life until my next bite of food. And, 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 and I love that. And, and good, go after it. Like uh, Dennis Prager says, you should approach friendships like you do romantic partners. Like you shouldn't just expect it to happen. If you see someone that you feel it would be good Love for you to, to really go. We met because I think on 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 social media or something, you saw something I taught. We had, no, we I had, read your book. Your book's unbelievable. And and <laughs> because 20, of that, it's led to a lot of good uh, uh, events we've done together, podcasts, so many things. It's like, you see, I've, I've made great relationships, even on Instagram, someone who's doing an amazing thing. I'll message, we'll have like a Zoom or, or and I'll get to know them. And like, you meet incredible people in this digital age that you would only, you could only meet now. And and like, seek out those that, that, that speak to you, that inspire you. I think it's- um, I it's love that so much. I, I told you right before we started filming that- Thank God, um, my clients, my group program, a lot of the time they'll come to me and say, you know, I'm I'm feeling like maybe a little isolated or not connected to people or just want to feel that deep connection. And the first place I always send them is to you. And not only has one gone, but then the other one brought the other one. But then the next one brought the this. And like it then ripple affected into their lives where now they're moving to different states and this and they've met people and like, really just to go out there and for friendships specifically, if somebody here is in their 20s, 30s, like it can 40s, whatever, 50s, whatever age you're at, friendships then also get confusing. But to see it like, you know, Jonathan used to date, like you, I love making friendship dates. Being a mom now, I make so many new friends and like, I, but I have to text them and be vulnerable and say, you know, hey, like want to be friends more or less. And it's that, that idea of like that constant search of life. Um, and I think that's what you do very well, not only to say connect to God in your way, in your spiritual way, in the in the embodiment way, but also connect to people. You're very much so about connecting to people. Yeah, but I always thought my work was going to be just helping people connect like spiritually. And I quickly realized that people are we're seeking a tribe. We, we need to connect to each other. You know, throughout history, we had that. Like you were part of a tribe, you had your role. And now the beauty of a capitalist society and democracy and freedom is that you don't have to. You can live on your own without anybody. But now the detriment of that is we're realizing like people are isolated and don't feel like they're part of. We at least have, you know, we have the Jewish community. Many people I'm meeting in New York State don't even have we used to, oh, I could go to a Shabbat dinner. We're so blessed. There's so many people that don't, that don't, um, that don't have that. And um, I, there was a study in 1987, a national health study that said those that uh, f- go once a week to a faith-based community experience live on average seven to 14 years longer than those that don't. It's really cool. And it could be to do with that was, loneliness, uh, nurturing. That was research. If you're yeah. part of a faith community, seven to 14 years and, longer? Yes. And, and, you know, this is a small example. I was thinking, how could that be? That's how do you find number. out? It's a big number. It's a big number. It's I'll very, send it to you after. And I don't know if the faith community works out that much or eats that And by the way, you could argue. Works out. Argue and I've seen a lot of study groups that are just sodas, Sprites, <laughs> Coca-Colas, and cookies and chips. I'm not so sure they're living seven to 14 no, years No, but long. you need both. You need, by the way, you need I body think and- in 1987, there, there weren't so many alternative communities. Today, there aren't that many alternative communities. But I don't know if it means faith-based only. It could just be the fact that faith-based people are so consistent about it. It's more the community side, it could even be. The fact that you're with other people, the fact that someone's sick, people pay, an, oh, you just had a child, we're gonna make you a food food train, everyone's gonna take care. There's this idea of support, mm-hmm. so loneliness is better. Uh, support if someone gets sick or needs financial help. Uh, like I've seen it with my, my mother runs a gemach in San Diego. If anyone's in need in the entire city, they watch over them. We're, so, that's what our community does. And I think that's beautiful. Um, I think every, there's a big draw to joining a team and everybody in life tries to find their team. Some find it in sports, others find it in religion. Mm. 
what's scary is that some people find it in, uh, you know, on the wrong team, the right. wrong group. And that's when it's like, oh shoot! But you always say, if you Gang. want to live, a good I, life, I would always, I always say, if I grew up in the, if no I grew up in the inner city about. without parents, I would for sure be part of gang. I know it. I know my personality. When I was, I had a great, lovely background. I almost joined in, in high school. I had a friend part of a gang, and I was like, this is great. Everyone has your back. Like nobody would mess with me. I'd be cool. Like why not? For but sure. To, but to find your good gang, he always says he's like specifically in dating. One of the best things to do is to find really good people around you who are going to support you, who are going to make you grow. The minute you're surrounded by people who bring you down, that's the energy that you end up doing. Like, I think it's your, your, a makeup of the accumulation of yes. your five closest friends yeah. or something like that. Um, so really dedicating your life to, to up, you know, that upward with people who are also on that upward. Um, so I have one question because okay. it's something that I have borrowed from you. I remember during 2020, we used to do meditations, used to host meditations on Zooms that I would show up to. And you did one that was so cool. And it's it's going to go along my question of what can people do maybe every single day to return back to this because it is an everyday practice. And you did a meditation where in the morning in Judaism, you say a beautiful prayer that we say every morning to our daughter, Modeani. And I just got the chills thinking about it because what it means, and you're going to say this much better than me, but Hashem, and again, whatever the words that anyone uses out there, is blowing air back into your body today. And we forget the beauty and spectacularness of the fact that we literally woke up today. Like we're talking about the food and the rain and the running and the sports teams and the, the friendships, like so many things are so unbelievable that we forget about. But the first thing that is a miracle is that we got the breath again today. And you did a, you did a um, meditation where you imagined like the universe giving you that breath, like rather than just like breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. It's like almost a parent is like giving you this like mm. life every second. It was really powerful, super cool. Um, and to live the first second you wake up your eyes in the morning, open your eyes in the morning to think that way, like is so powerful. Do you have Let's say like one last piece of advice for people for an everyday practice, something like that, that just really connects them immediately or throughout the day. Like what's that one thing you'd give to people? So what my favorite trait, human trait is wonder, is the ability to not be jaded by the everyday. Because that's the reason we're not amazed by anything is just simply repetition. But it doesn't mean it's any, if, if, past this window and an elephant started flying and that's what elephants always did in our lifetime, we'd think nothing of it. But it'd be miraculous now because we're not used to seeing it. Why is a bird any less miraculous? So I think with 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 the breath thing, I like to I like to almost like think about everything is is a gift. Like the fact that I can just take the next next breath is not nothing's nothing's um we didn't earn it or it's not guaranteed. Everything we have, every food, everything in our life is is um is a gift. It's actually a book I love called It's All a Gift. And cool. gratitude and appreciation. Like before I go to sleep, one of my nightly practices is I have a certain like ritual thing that I do with meditation, but uh and connecting to Hashem. But one of the things I do is I think about my day and what stood out that I can be grat- grateful for. It's a couple of small things. This little thing happened, a good phone call happened or whatever. And sometimes it's a, it's a major thing. Maybe it was something bigger, but just like Every like just being aware of all the blessings that are coming into your life. That's what Modani is. Sometimes, funny enough, when you wake up, you're not so aware. It's a powerful thing, but you're not at night though, or other times in your day. You should do Modani as well conceptually. It's like just noticing the blessings in your life uh, and not taking it for granted. Uh, and and when you talk about the breath, just like I, it's one of the meditations I like is to imagine the the first human or your first. Um, uh, uh, be, being born and, and having breath, I think it's uh, it's a very um, it's a very powerful thing because every moment, you know, the last verse in Psalms of King David, it says Kol Hanashama to Hallelujah Hallelujah. Every Neshama praise God, but the name Neshama soul comes from the word Neshima breath. So you could also read the last verse of Psalms for every breath I praise God. Sting didn't come up with it. It's King David. Every breath you take is that <laughs> is is to feel that this like breath. That. Sting yeah. is good. That's that's the really the conc- that's really what we we're gonna take out of this um, experience. Sting is the man. Um, <laughs> we are very similar, Rabbi, because I I I believe that all day long, from morning to night, I always feel thankful and grateful and blessed mm. every second of every minute of every hour of every day. 
That's how I walk around. It really does. And I'm happy. I'm always happy. Huge. And I've always been that happy. I think my mother and my father and my family um, put this in me. Of course, school and, and Hashem. But anyways, I was overhearing my wife, who was a little bit down, um, I guess, the other night in the kitchen. She was a little down, understandably so. And um, I turned off the light while she was doing the dishes. <laughs> You did. I want to punch you. And immediately she's like, what are you doing? And I said, look how, look how lucky we are. Look how thankful we should be. You know, you, we're down. I understand we're down for a second or two. Um, but look how many miracles are surrounding us. I didn't see a flying elephant, but I did turn off the kitchen light. And I was like, look, this is amazing. Like, this is, we, the this, fact that our, we have our light. apartment is great. Our home is great. We can talk about a million things that, are, that we're blessed with, but like, just look at the kitchen light. Like, wow, this mm. is, uh, we're living in a world of wow. And then she went back to complaining and I went back in the <laughs> kitchen 30 not. seconds later and I turned the light off again. <laughs> You're allowed to hate your I husband, said, right? Do you realize how lucky you are at, you know, every second of every day? Focus on that. Um, so did you like that? No, he's right. Just the the fact that you can turn on one light at a blink of an eye and see. And and I mean, I always think about it with the shower because you know me, I like love a long, hot, 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 hot being in the shower. And I'm like, where is this hot water just automatically coming from that I'm so lucky to like sit here? Like, it's so true. It's such a way of life. It's not necessarily, of course, going to a shul or a synagogue or wherever someone prays is beautiful, but it's not just about that. It's about living your life with that awe and wonder, not even just gratitude, but that, that like true awe and wonder. And Jonathan, this is everything he's taught me. So, so you guys, yes, are very aligned. And never taking for, for granted the little things, the minor details. If you were to ask me, Rabbi, how's your apartment? I would never mention the kitchen light. Mm. I would never mention all these little miracles, mm. all these mm. tiny details that we never think about. Yeah. I would say the view, I would talk about the view, the renovations, the finishes, the size. And, you know, that would, that would generally speaking sum up if I'm in a great apartment or not. But what about the kitchen light? I mean, we're talking about in life, there's so many miracles in our body surrounding us, our friends, uh, gravity, oxygen, blue skies, sunny days where I can go tanning. Like there's so many blessings mm. that, we're, that we're blessed with. Yeah. That we should be grateful all the time for big miracles and small. And you can still be ambitious and want more and more. And at the same time on the journey, say, thank you, Hashem. And can there be more? But enjoying the 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 what you have now i think sometimes when you didn't have it and then you get it, it's a little easier sometimes mm -hmm. we're used to it's sure. nature, human nature to be used to sure. what you're used to but it um and, and you know i know from like even my apartment and things like that in new york i've had others that there's always something that in this one i didn't have in the last one i can appreciate something new about right. about about because you can always look at a different one. I wish I had. I wish I had 20,000 square feet. Or this I have a friend, no, I, I have no, a friend no. who told me she goes <laughs> on the street, on the she street, goes street easy every day, even if she's not looking for an apartment. I'm like, why do you do that? It's just nature we to be like, I, yes. do, uh, look it's at fun. street easy. <laughs> oh, I love street easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mentally moved to Scarsdale, <laughs> Long Island, Jersey. During I, COVID, I moved to like Savannah, I'm, Georgia. I'm even I moved following to Alaska real estate just to like see what I can I get. have on Instagram, I have a page <laughs> of, of cheap homes and exotic places. It'll be like, Julia, Italy, Amalfi Coast for 100,000 euros overlooking the water. It's a little hovel, but like, I'm like, yeah, that's a good deal. That's Wait. Like one year's rent. I could get like a cottage in like, Brilliant. in Croatia, you know, but We're it's We're moving fun, to so. Anguilla. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to move to Anguilla. Well, Rabbi, this has been so much fun and I learned even more from you. I do every single time, but I would love to know like, where could people find you? How can they get involved in all of this amazing work you're doing? It's been an absolute pleasure. Love you guys. Thank you for having yeah, me on. Nice. This is so much fun. Glad we made it happen. Uh, millennial rabbi, which nobody knows how to spell millennial. I don't. It's two N's. Nobody, Are you sure? It's always one. Are you sure it's not one, a two L's? I was L's. never very good in spelling. I always think it's two L's and one N. That's what everyone thinks. That's, it's are you ends. sure? I, maybe, maybe the way I Googled it and started it, but if you Google it, I think you'll find it. Okay. Find <laughs> but, so that's millennial, at millennial one rabbi. It, it, one L, one L, L, two N's, everyone. Yeah. Whatever, if you don't find it, it's fine. It's, 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 ask Remy, she'll say Millennial it. rabbi. Uh, and then uh, our organization is called Soul X, but Soul X is taken by a Asian girl who's been off Instagram since 2011. So if anybody at Meta wants to help us get at Soul X, I've actually met the guy at, at Rabbi. Uh, not met him, I talked to him online. I think it's a Russian team. So I'm working on, you know, we'll see if we can get those. Soul X Global is the- Beautiful, handle. I and like that's it. it. That's what do you mean that's it? You're single, Rabbi. <laughs> 
You, the all you ladies cut. out the there, cut. if you're looking for a cute, he looks 25, but he's in his 30s, handsome, spicy, Ashkenazi or Sephardic? <laughs> half, half. He's a, he's a black and white cookie. He's 50 50. <laughs> you you go like either tan, way. I like a tan like you, but. <laughs> if, all right, if, that too. If you have any interest, please reach out to. Remy or to the rabbi. But really, everybody should attend his events in Manhattan. He also does them in Miami at times, California, all over. Follow him, attend his events. They're spectacular, amazing. And you see it here first. He's unbelievable. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You're the best. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope you liked it as much as we did. Now go send it to someone who needs to hear it because we know that dating, relationships, marriage can be tough, but we want to make it less tough. And remember, you're allowed to hate your husband. Whatever you're feeling is allowed. So go send it to a friend, to your sister, your brother, maybe your boyfriend, a husband, whoever needs to hear this, send it to them. And while you're at it, click the follow button, click the review button. Always feel free to reach out if you have any questions and we are so excited to see you in our next episode.